What is up my YouTube friends? Are you experiencing buffering on your live stream? Or maybe your video is laggy so your audio is not in sync. Today I want to show you how to modify your stream settings in OBS so you aren't having these problems. So let's get to it! My analytics say that 80% of the folks watching my content are not subscribed. Am I doing something wrong? If so, definitely let me know in the comments. But if you are looking for tools, tips, and tricks that can help make you a better YouTuber or live streamer, subscribe to the channel and click that bell so you don't miss any new content. It's totally free. Believe it or not, buffering and lagging are actually completely different issues caused by completely different things. So first, we need to figure out what exactly is causing your problem. So the first thing we need to do is figure out whether we're actually lagging or buffering. And the easiest way to do that is to go and we're gonna go into view and docs, and then we're going to go to stats. And I'm already live streaming, as you can see down here in the right, if I flip over into YouTube, you can see we are live streaming and the stream health and it tells us everything is in excellent condition we're live streaming great but this doesn't really actually give us any information about how we're live streaming literally we know nothing so in order for us to know how our live stream is actually going we need to go over here and we need to take a look at the stats doc now when you first open your stats doc it may show up like this and i've had mine open before so it automatically docks over here but you can just drag it and drop it and it's the same with my scenes window you can see i have it over here but you can drag this wherever you want i just have more scenes so i put it over here so we have our initial scene up here this is what i put on before i start my stream and we can take a look at what's going on so we are currently live streaming at 6,000 or so kilobits per second 5500 we have a zero drop frames so when you see zero drop frames in your live stream you know you are not buffering you know you are live streaming at a speed that your computer internet connection can handle so drop frames down here is your internet connection and if you're dropping frames that means that YouTube is buffering. If I go into settings, let me show you here. We go to output and this 55 kilobyte or the 5,500 kilobyte rate is this one down here. Now there is some numbers added on here and you can find out if you go into audio, your audio bit rate, and that's what determines the little bit of extra that's added onto here. And of course, if you are running a really active stream, it could go up or down as well. But the 5,500 kilobits bit rate is kind of just a guideline for your OBS settings. Yours might be higher or it might be lower. If you've watched one of my videos on how to set that up, that's gonna be how you determine that. Now we're just going to determine whether that's going to work for you or whether it's going to cause buffering and as you can see we're not getting any dropped frames so we are not having any buffering issues so if we go up here to the stats window in the top left we can see our cpu usage our frames per second so i'm streaming at 30 frames per second the average time to render a single frame or 1.7 or 1.8 milliseconds right in there missed frames due to render lag is zero or skipped frames due to encoding lag is zero so this means that right Right now, the way we sit, my machine is capable of encoding the stream and doing it in a way that doesn't tax the computer. So right now, I am not experiencing any lag at all. If my machine was dropping frames due to render lag or encoding lag, that's where you get lag, where your voice is not in sync with your actual video and things like that. So when you're testing this, you wanna make sure that you flip through screens, you make sure that you get your transitions working and doing all the things that your transitions would normally do so that you can see that you're not getting any buffering or rendering or any of that stuff. You wanna know for sure that you're getting everything that you should. In fact, go through all of your scenes and make sure. In fact, you wanna test your widgets. So I'm gonna go into my stream elements and I'm going to test to make sure that my widgets are functional and we're gonna take a look and see if they're causing any render lag or anything like that and everything is perfect I'm not getting any frames lost due to render lag encoding lag and absolutely no buffering 
But now you know where to look and you know how to test. And therein lies the very most important steps in determining exactly what is causing your problems. So now you should know what's causing your problem. Let's tackle the buffering issue first. The easiest way to fix buffering is to get a better connection. Of course, this can cost a lot of money and some people may not actually have access to a better connection in their area. So in this case, you're gonna need to make some trade-offs. So using this chart, we can determine how we can effectively fix your buffering problem. First, you wanna go and you wanna do a speed test on your internet connection to see what your upload speed is. And this two to five megabits per second or 2.9 to 7.4, well, this is gonna tell you what you can ideally stream at. And then you wanna go over here and look at your suggested bit rate. So if you're currently trying to live stream at 1080, 60 frames per second, you should the Theoretically, the top end is 9,000 kilobits per second. But let's say you're trying to stream at 6,000 kilobits per second and you're having all kinds of buffering problems. Well, you can still stream at 1080, 30 frames per second if you lower your bit rate to 3,000 kilobits per second. Now, you're not going to get quite the same quality picture at 3,000 kilobits per second, but you can still do it without buffering. So if you're trying to stream a high def stream at 1080, lower your bit rate all the way down to 3000 and test and see if you can do a live stream without buffering at 3000 kilobits per second. If you're still buffering at 1080 and 30 and 3000 kilobits per second, then it's time for you to consider lowering your live stream to 720. Let me show you in OBS where you can adjust these settings. Here in OBS, we're going to go into settings and we're going to go to output and right here is where we have our bit rate. So you're going to adjust this according to the chart and then you're going to test your live stream again. And you can lower this based on this chart right here and still get a pretty good quality stream. Now, if you need to go to a lower resolution, let's say you need to adjust to 720. In order to do that, you're gonna to wanna to go to video. And here's your base canvas. Your base canvas is this square right here, and then your output resolution is what's going to be streamed out to YouTube. If you set this lower, if you go to 720 here, then you wanna to go to 720 here. You do not want your machine to have to work harder to scale this particular item. So make sure that your base canvas resolution and your scaled output resolution are exactly the same or you're just making your computer work that much harder. So this is where you would adjust your resolution and over here is where you would adjust your bits per second. And that is what you're going to need to adjust to make sure that your stream isn't buffering. If laggy video is your issue, then there are a few ways that we can tackle this to try to fix it. Ultimately, a new machine more suited to the level of live stream you're trying to produce is the easiest solution. But obviously, this isn't always possible. New computers can cost a lot of money and there's no getting around that. But if you decide to go with a new computer, I would recommend going a PC for streaming. I know, I love my Mac too and I use it for everything except for live streaming. There are way too many reasons to even list here as to why a PC is a better and easier streaming platform. And while you're at it, make sure you get an NVIDIA graphics card in it because, well, they have a dedicated encoder and it makes it a lot easier to live stream. Now for those of you that a new machine is not in the cards, let me show you what you can do to reduce or even remove the lag that you're getting on your live streams. Let's go ahead and dig into how you're going to fix lag for your stream. We're gonna go into settings and we're going to go to output. And the first thing that controls your laggy stream is the encoder. So you wanna drop this down and make sure that if you have a specialized encoder on a graphics card or something like an Nvidia card, that you have that selected. That is actually a completely separate chip that's just designed to encode live streams and things like that. So if you have one, you definitely wanna select it. If you don't have one, X264 is perfectly fine. Let's walk through X264 because I think generally speaking, people who are gonna run into lag are folks that don't have graphics cards. So let me walk you through how encoding works once you set this up. Now right down here you have your CPU usage and higher equals less CPU. 
So if I have this set to ultra fast, I am using much less computer power and it's just producing it as fast as it possibly can. So if you're running into lag issues, start with the lowest setting and go ahead and try it, test it and test it and see if it works. And if it does work, then you can step up to a little faster setting to see if that works. You wanna set it to as high as you can without creating any lag. But honestly, I'm not sure you need to go much past medium. If you've got it set to medium and it's not lagging, you're in good shape. Leave it right there because the quality really doesn't get a whole heck of a lot better once you push past medium. Now profile has baseline, main, and high. And this I haven't noticed to have a whole heck of a lot of difference. So I just have it set to none. And tune will kind of tell the encoder what type of stream you're doing is it film is it animation all that kind of stuff and none works just fine here too you can mess with these settings if you're really having problems but chances are just leaving them alone is fine you can also adjust your bit rate and this is the actual density of the encode that it's doing so if you lower your bit rate a little bit and again you want to definitely go by this chart right here when you lower your bit rate you don't want it lower than what a quality stream should be, but you can lower your bit rate a bit here. It will make that encoding less dense and maybe just give you a little bit more of the headroom that you need so that you're not dropping frames and lagging. The other thing that you can do or you may need to do is if you're really lagging, it, it does mean that your equipment is not strong enough. You can go into video and downsize to 720. And believe me, I know a lot of people, they want to live stream at the highest rate that they possibly can. And I understand that. But most people are watching live streams on their cell phone at like 340. So if you have to downsize to 720, you're going to be okay. <laughs> I'm serious. You're going to be fine. If you downsize here, make sure you downsize both because encoding two streams or encoding it in one way and then resizing it is more work. And then you can go back into the, your output and adjust your bit rate to that new encoding setting based on the chart and then go ahead and adjust your CPU preset here as well and just test 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 now I will recommend when you go and you switch the outside canvas resolution of your stream what you're gonna see happen is you're gonna go into your scenes and they're gonna be a mess let me go back here so instead of it being like this it's obviously since this is 1080, it's going to be huge. It's gonna, you know, you're gonna have it look like this. And so what you're gonna wanna do, I know that this isn't a lot of fun, but what you're going to absolutely need to do is you're going to need to put these video assets and all of your assets into some form of editing software and scale them down to 720 because if you're using 1080 assets in a 720 window with a 720 stream, then it's still re-encoding those. You're trying to take all of that stress off of your computer. And the easiest way to do that is to resize your assets. Sure, it's going to take you a little bit of time to do this, but at the end of the day, you're going to be thankful that you resized your assets because you're using them all the time for your live stream. You only have to resize them or rescale them one time. And it could make a huge difference in the average time to render frame and basically remove your lag. And that, of course, is what you're looking to do. Now, if you want to see what my favorite OBS plugins are, you should check this video out. And if you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks that can help make you a better YouTuber or live streamer, subscribe to the channel. My name is Michael Fire Jr. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.